Over the last year or so, I've been getting to know George Herbert. George Herbert is one of the greatest religious poets of all time, and over the centuries, Christians have engaged with and enjoyed his poetry. George Herbert was born in 1593, but it wasn't until after his death in 1633, at the age of 39, that his poems were published under the title The Temple. I'm not a poetry expert, far from it. I'm not really even a poetry enthusiast. But that's one of the things that makes George Herbert so special that even someone like me can engage with and enjoy his poetry. And this Easter, today on Maundy Thursday, tomorrow on Good Friday and then on Easter Sunday, I'm reading and reflecting on a few George Herbert poems. This is the first reflection and today's poem is called The Agony. The theme of this poem is the suffering of Christ. Although most people overlook his suffering, the suffering of Christ teaches us about two vast, vital things. It teaches us about sin and it teaches us about love. And so let's read the poem. This is The Agony by George Herbert. Philosophers have measured mountains, fathomed the depths of seas, of states and kings, walked with a staff to heaven and traced fountains. But there are two vast spacious things, the which to measure it doth more behove, yet few there are that sound them, sin and love. Who would know sin? Let him repair unto Mount Olivet. There shall he see a man so wrung with pains that all his hair, his skin, his garments bloody be. Sin is that press and vice which forceth pain to hunt his cruel food through every vein. Who knows not love? Let him assay and taste that juice which on the cross a pike did set again a brooch. Then let him say, if ever he did taste the like. Love is that liquor sweet and most divine, which my God feels as blood, but I as wine. Art provokes us to see and feel. A great artist sees and feels things that most of us don't, and then they use their gift to help us see and feel what they have. When you listen to a great pianist, for example, and you're deeply moved, the pianist has succeeded, at least in part, in helping you to see and feel what they have. The same is true with a painter. When you see a great painting and you're sympathetic or you're stunned, the painter has succeeded, at least in part, in helping you to see and feel what they have. And the same is true with a poet. A great poet sees and feels things that most of us don't, and then they use their gift to help us see and feel what they have. And a great poet can do that with a single sentence. And that's what George Herbert does in this poem. In the first paragraph, Herbert is saying, People have spent a lot of time exploring the earth, measuring mountains and the depth of seas. People have walked with a staff to heaven. And I don't know what he means by that, because it wasn't until 1961 that the first human travelled into space, hundreds of years after George Herbert. But maybe George Herbert was exaggerating for effect. That's what people do. But that's no longer an exaggeration. Not only do people now explore the earth, but they also explore the heavens, the solar system. And George Herbert doesn't say that they shouldn't. But he does say there are two vast, spacious things that are more important to explore, more important than heaven and earth, but not many people do. These two things are sin and love. In the second paragraph, George Herbert explores sin. If you want to understand sin, he says, and how ugly it really is, go to the Garden of Gethsemane where you'll see a man so wrung with pains, so squeezed, so strained, that his sweat is like drops of blood falling to the ground. George Herbert knows that the name Gethsemane means olive press. 
On the night that Jesus was sweating blood, the Thursday evening before the crucifixion, it wasn't olives that were being pressed. It was him. The prospect of paying for sin pressed down on Jesus until blood dripped from his face like oil from an olive. And George Herbert is saying, that's sin. My sin and your sin is that press and vice. In the third paragraph, George Herbert explores love. If you don't understand love, he says, and how beautiful it really is, go to the cross of Christ, where you'll see a man who was pierced with a pike or with a spear he was stabbed in the side. And that abroached or opened a wound. And from that wound flows a liquid, a liquor sweet and most divine, which my God feels as blood, but I as wine. I love those last two lines. Do you see and feel what George Herbert saw and felt? The cross of Christ is where people like us taste love. People like us, sinners like us, taste real love, rich, redeeming, reconciling love. At the cross of Christ, we taste God's love for us. And we also taste God's love for us at communion. When we share the Lord's Supper tomorrow morning on Good Friday, that's what we'll be doing will be remembering the sacrifice, the substitutes, that Jesus Christ endured the anger of God so that we can experience the love of God. We'll remember that tomorrow morning. But we'll also be doing more than that tomorrow morning. We'll also be relishing. Communion is about tasting God's love. We'll actually taste it. When we drink in the wine, we'll drink in God's love for us. Communion is a physical promise from God to us that says, I love you. Love is that liquor sweet and most divine, which my God feels as blood, but I as wine.